Today we're here with Dr. Fawzi El Nadi um, at Virginia Tech, and we're meeting up with Ms. Walston, seventh grade life science student. Uh, welcome uh, uh, to the veterinary anatomy, the inside beauty and secrets of the animal body. My name is Fawzi El Nadi, associate professor in anatomy, and we have uh, Ms. Uh, April Hoffman. Uh, working in the anatomy preparation lab. We, we are glad to present you some of the uh, specimens we preserved to show you the inside beauty of the animals. Usually you see the outside beauty of the animals, but today we will display some of the inside beauty of these animals. We will start for the horse or with the horse. Look. This is the stomach of the horse. You can see how small it is compared to the size of the horse. The stomach of the horse is simple stomach. It is one chamber, but it has two types of mucous membrane. If the camera can get close, you can see we have two types of mucous membrane inside the stomach of the horse. The other a specimen, which is a, a huge one or big one, I'm showing. This is the intestine of the horse. This is the large intestine. You see how it is uh, large and it is not fixed inside the body very well. That's why horses usually have uh, abdominal pain and make uh, uh, colic, colic, which uh, you see the horse in uh, painful condition and uh, kicking the ground, rolling on the ground. This is because sometimes the intestine get twisted inside the body like this and the food cannot pass and the animal uh, gets this pain and it should be treated immediately to relieve the uh, symptoms. Because as you know, the horse is a herbivore, herbivores, which means he uh, eats uh, plants and grasses and this uh, contains cellulose and it needs uh, a vat or a container to ferment. So here we have this big container like the cecum and the large intestine to have a sufficient space for fermentation of this uh, grass and cellulose. So all of this is the intestine of the horse compared to the small uh, stomach. Small stomach, large and big intestine. You can see this is the head of a horse lovely horse, and if we remove the skin, what is under the skin of the horse? We have the muscles. These are the muscles. This is the muscle which masticates the food, chewing, chewing the food, and the muscles which uh, elevate the lip and move the, uh, the upper lip and lower lip. And if we remove this muscle, we can see other structures underneath there are some veins which carry the venous blood and they are connected like a circle without valves in between. These we, veins usually have uh, or have valves to prevent the return of blood. But these uh, veins present in the face have no valves because the animal sometimes put his uh, head to eat from the ground. So he raised it upward so the blood can circulate downward and upward freely without any uh, problem. That's why it, uh, it has no valves. This is the distal limb of the horse. Uh, Miss April have cut the hoof into pieces so that now we are able to remove the hoof capsule and see what is underneath. This is the sensitive laminae, which are very, very sensitive we ensure that all these specimens are from ethical sources. We have uh, some other specimens. We have this hedgehog. We preserve it. Here we can see the viscera, the thoracic cavity, the heart, the liver, the intestine. Can you see the intestine and the uh, mesentery? A lot of things can be seen within the animal body. This specimen about uh, more than one year now preserved 
uh, in the same way. All of this is the stomach of the goat, spleen of the goat, and this is the liver of the goat. So all of this unit is from a goat. The stomach of the uh, small ruminants or ruminants, the animals which regurgitate the food, sometimes the people say they have four stomachs. No, no animal have uh, or has more than one stomach. But these animals, the ruminants, have a stomach which is compound, has more than one chamber. This is one chamber, this is the second, this is the third, and there is a fourth chamber here. So there are four compartments, but it is still one stomach. The uh, last specimen we want to show you, this is a uh, conjoined twins of pigs. These are two uh, uh, pigs uh, born, with, but they are conjoined in the thorax and abdomen. As we can see, they are joined together. And they, when we open, we can see that they share thoracic cavity, one thoracic cavity, conjoined heart. This is one heart joined together and still have one lungs. And the uh, intestine is here, this conjoined uh, twin. This is what uh, our part of the specimens I'd like to show you uh, today. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm ready to answer. Can you talk about the process for, you know, when you have a, an animal that has died uh, through natural or, or accidental causes and you see something that needs to be, um, can be made into a model. How do you do that? Uh, the, the, the process is starting after the uh, animal uh, brought to us in the EPL, where we start embalming the animal uh, using the regular ways of, of embalming, either formalin or embalming solution. Uh, we wait about one week. Then we start the process of uh, preservation. We, uh, we wash the formalin by water to get rid uh, most of the formalin out of the uh, specimen. Then we start the process by uh, dehydration. We dehydrate the specimens uh, using acetone. Uh, we can also use alcohol for dehydration. Uh, once the specimen is completely dehydrated using the acetone, we transfer it. This probably take one or two weeks. We take impregnate into uh, glycerin. And the glycerin is the magic of the process. Glycerin will penetrate and replace the acetone and gets inside the tissue in the cells and in the interstitial spaces. After this, uh, we start the process of curing. Uh, the process of impregnation, uh, maximum for one week. The uh, last step uh, for curing, we uh, leave the specimen to drain the glycerin. Then, uh, cure it using cornstarch. Does the horse have veins like our wrist? Yes, yes, the horse has veins and arteries, has everything like the human being, uh, but of course there are variations. How did some of these animals die? It is a very good question. Uh, some animals, uh, as I mentioned, uh, may came from uh, accident. Or, and uh, the, the, the owners of the pet animals, sometimes they donate these uh, animals when they know that we can use uh, and preserve the, their tissues and their bodies for uh, the, the teaching process, they agree. And some we uh, get from necropsy uh, where the uh, animals uh, get to the clinic, Virginia teach, uh, Teaching Hospital, and they uh, die for a reason or another. Uh, then their cadavers get uh, to be dissected or their uh, corpuses get to be dissected uh, in necropsy uh, to make sure what is the cause or the reason why they died. So after uh, doing the necropsy or the, this examination, uh, which is called post-mortem examination, we take the specimens we want uh, rather than throwing it or uh, inseminating. So that stomach and, and intestine that you just showed, is that made of cloth or is that a real stomach and intestine? Yes, this is a very good question. This is uh, real specimens. We just uh, stand with uh, colors to differentiate in some parts. 
but for example, the stomach is not uh, colored. And this is the new technique which we used here in Virginia Tech to preserve the specimens outside the fridge, no solutions. And it is soft, as you can see, we can bend and uh, the membranes are very uh, pliable and uh, flexible. What do the four compartments of a goat stomach do? Yeah, the, the four compartments, they are given names. The first, we divide the, these four compartments into two main parts. One part is glandular or, or uh, doing the real stomach. The other parts are non-glandular or called uh, proventriculus. They are named uh, reticulum, rumen, and omasum. These are the three non-glandular compartments. I just want to take a minute to thank Ms. Walston, seventh graders, and also Dr. Alnadi and April Huffman as well. You all were wonderful.